Hands, where Kellyanne and Jaron are standing by with the latest coverage as we get ready for tonight at the Superdome. Guys. Hey Harrison, good morning to you. We're just about 13 hours away from kickoff inside of the Mercedes-Benz Superdome for the LSU Tigers facing the Clemson Tigers in the national championship. And you know, there are not a lot of people who know what it's like to play in a championship. None, uh, it, it, nonetheless, not many people who know what it's like to win one. Exactly, and there's certainly even a shorter list when it comes to people that are from Baton Rouge who had the dream of going to play mm -hmm. on with the LSU Tigers. And uh, I had a chance actually to sit down with one of the guys from the 2007 National Championship team, Derry Beckwith. He went to Parkview Baptist, born and raised in Baton Rouge, and he was really a great story. He stopped by what I want to call the Tiger Lounge. He was in the studio with us for some time, and uh, he's a sweet guy, awesome guy. Take a listen. We're here right now with former linebacker from LSU, Derry Beckwith, and you're also a member of the 2007 National Championship team. But let's take it back to Baton Rouge because you're a Baton Rouge guy, went to Parkview Baptist. Did you ever think you'd be playing for the LSU Tigers? No, I had never dreamed of playing for LSU. Really growing up in the front yard, my parents always dreamed of going to Florida State, which is LSU was never on my mind. But as the older I've gotten, when I got older, obviously guys like Michael Clayton and Marcus Spears, guys that were from Baton Rouge, when I saw them excel at LSU, it made me think, you know what, I could play at this level. And for them to offer me a scholarship after my junior year was incredible. So the opportunity to play in your hometown, play in front of family and friends was something that I would never forget and always cherish. Now there's a very small list of guys that are actually on that list of coming from Baton Rouge, but I like the story real quick about how Coach Saban came to your house and offered you that scholarship. Can you tell us real quick? Yes, yeah, so I never technically myself committed to LSU. Uh, we had something back then called Junior Day when he invited all the juniors and he had to offer you in front of your parents. So I remember we go into the room, he opens, he opens up the door, crosses his legs and gives the whole recruiting pitch spiel, offers me in front of my parents and I looked at him and I said, Coach Saban, I definitely appreciate it, but I'm going to think about it. And I could remember my mom was sitting two chairs down from me and I could feel something beaming in my face like these eyes just basically nailing through my skin. And I looked at her and she looked at Coach Saban and she said, think about it. He's not thinking about anything. He's going here. And so he <laughs> fell out laughing. So he said, does that mean you committed? I said, well, I guess so. So I, I never get my verbal commitment. So that always that goes to my mom for committing for me to go to LSU. So she made the right choice. Yeah, moms always know best, <laughs> yes, right? Yes, she yes, still does exactly. today, I'm sure. You're the only two-loss team going into the 2007 game that's ever played in the BCS National Championship. So there had to be a little bit of distraction. There had to be some adversity that you guys had to c overcome. And that sort of lines up with what we're seeing from the LSU team this year and Joe Burrow and having to come at, overcome that adversity and just basically step up to the challenge. What's your biggest takeaway from those losses that you guys had that season? And uh, what did you think? Like, we're, are we still going to be able to play for this title? Did that cross your mind? Though, first off, those two losses still sting me to this day. <laughs> like, it bothers me so much. Obviously, I'm so glad we won the championship. But those two losses, and the way we lost them, we lost in overtime. I'll just tell your hometown of Lexington, Kentucky. We <laughs> lost to those guys in Arkansas with Damian and Fatten, all those guys. So it, it did sting, but we had no idea. All we knew that we had to take care of business, and if we took care of business, things may fall into place. And, and thank God they did. It was the perfect scenario, perfect storm. Certain teams had to lose. And I can remember when we won the SEC championship game all the way back, we heard that the two, two teams lost for us to actually get in. And I can remember the plane dipped because we were celebrating so much. <laughs> and so it never really came across our mind, like, you know, with two losses, we out of it. We just looked, take care of business. And, and, and at the end of the day, winning a, a conference championship, especially the SEC, is just as important as winning a national championship because of the amount of competition that you play every Saturday. What do you think about this year's team? This year's team, for me, uh, I love them because I think they play with a chip on their shoulder. You have guys who either been told there wasn't, they weren't good enough, weren't big enough, weren't fast enough. Beginning with Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow is a guy who basically Ohio State said, look, you're not good enough to compete here. And for him to come and, and galvanize the team that he has done, the way he has done in the past two years is incredible. And the jump he's made from last year to this year is something I have never seen. So that shows me the improvement and the work ethic that he has that he put into the offseason. Another guy like Clyde Edwards Elair, too short, not fast enough. And for him, Great improvement from last year to this year. And obviously with Joe Brady coming in and reinventing that offense had a lot to do with it. The receivers last year, I think, dropped a lot of balls. I saw the special where over the summer they caught over like a thousand, like 10,000 balls over the summer. 
that goes to show you the work ethic they put in. And when you put the work in, things will manifest the way that you want them to. And it's definitely coming to fruition, and hopefully they'll end up with a victory. I love that you say they'll manifest the way that you want them to. And you've right. got to carry that vision of everything that you've done in life and been successful into your foundation today that you continue to work with. Tell us a little bit about that real quick. Yeah, so the Dad Becker Foundation, I started it five years ago with the hopes of letting kids know that you can be successful in anything else besides sports. Obviously, I went through it. I went through the whole process thinking I was going to play the NFL for a long time, and it didn't happen the way I wanted it to happen. But there's definitely other avenues that you can do to be successful. So what we do is create a, a format for these high school student athletes to realize, look, you can. there's other things that you can do. We set up tutoring for them, internships, and we also do um, workshop enrichment programs for as resume writings, how to tie a tie. Um, we do mm -hmm. a lot of things, and I also we're going to we're going to East Ascension tomorrow. Uh, we did a 3.0 GPA challenge for their football team for the first semester. So 37 of those students uh, received a 3.0. Uh, 37 football players received a 3.0 yeah. the first semester. So my goal is to have 100% uh, receive a 3.0 because I think you know, obviously when you go to those schools, how many guys are playing professionally? Everyone raises their hand. And if I asked them, if I took their helmet off, I took your jersey off, jersey off, do you know who you are? A lot of them can't answer that. And so our main focus is to realize, look, when you take that helmet off, take that jersey off, you're just as important. So the game's happening tonight. Okay. Where are you going to be to watch it? I'm actually going to be at home. I know a lot of people say, why do you want to go to the game? I, I, like, I like to watch it at home and enjoy myself. So I'm going to be at home, and hopefully it's been worth, worth the wait and worth my while to watch it. And what's the prediction? LSU 38. Clemson 24. So I'm going back to when we played Ohio State. <laughs> so I'm trying to get some, make some good luck magic. We won 38 to 24. So hopefully I think they'll win 38 to 24. Well, very well said. All right. Thanks so much, Terry.